3 p.m. comes quickly. Hello. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are. We're coming to you live from our studios here in Koko Mlimle on digital address GA 099 Take you through the top stories this hour. It's 81 days to the election and yet not all parties have a flag bearer. So what makes them think they deserve your attention? Well, the People's National Congress is one of such and General Secretary for the party, Bernard Mona, is my special guest. We go after the answers to these questions when he joins me. Electoral Commission exhibits voter registration starting to voter register starting tomorrow. We are live at the headquarters as the commission provides details on what to do and how. Security agencies lead election-related violence simulation exercise in three regions across the country, targeting flashpoint. More as we touch base with our team on the ground for details on how you will be handled if you choose to be involved in violence on election day. It is DSTV 41, Go TV 144. You can find us there. We're streaming live on YouTube. We're streaming also on Facebook. You can find us on our Twitter handle, uh, also uh, at Joy News on TV, and also on Instagram. Your thoughts are welcome on 0540109009. My name is Gifty Andoapia. This is The Pulse. Please be my guest. <music> Welcome to the show. Let me take you through the details. And we start off with a battle. Well, in every election, there are battles. And that battle is for your thumb. This year, your election headquarters were deploy redeploying boots on the ground on the new show, Battleground. The show brings the microphone to listeners of Superstation Joy 99.7 FM in a carefully selected constituency list every Thursday at 8 p.m. But before that, we'll give you a tease of what you should expect later tonight. The Adentan constituency will on December 7 see a keenly contested race. The MPP's Yabuabian Samoa will be seeking to make history as the only MP to be retained. A bigger gap. A bigger gap. In 2016, I had nothing to show. Now, we have lots to show. We have a lot of things that have happened in mere three and a half years of the new patriotic party's governance in Adenta. Like, as compared to the eight years that the NDC has like for, in Adenta. Yes, sir. And we believe that given the differences, residents of Adenta will feel the edge to maintain the MPP in power. The NDC's Mohammed Ramadan will want history to remain unchanged as he maintains Yao being a Samoa does not deserve a second term. If with the help of God we may be able to go through this one, I'm very confident that come 7th December 2020, Ramadan will be declared the winner and member of parliament elect for a dental constituency. <laughs> The constituents who are politically conscious simply cannot wait. At the bus terminal on a Thursday morning, the usual political debate is already underway. I join and ask who will win the seat in the upcoming election. Meters away from the central part of the terminal, I meet Ayisi and Big Joe. Big Joe, a driver in his early 40s, is the first to speak. He's clear in his mind that the current MP, Yao Bwabian Samwa, does not deserve his vote. It is not going well at all, because at the time the NPP was taking over government, we thought they would do things differently. We should see the road to read the taxi drivers use. It is in a terrible shape and impossible to use once again. Big Joe's friend, you see, has a contrary opinion. He insists Yao Bwabin Asamoah deserves a second term. They are telling lies. We are not losing. Things are cool here. 
So earlier on the election brief, I had a chat with host of the show, MFA Apau, who took us through what to expect and why. Let's hear from the lead producer for this project. Joseph Akable is the man you also saw on the ground interacting with the people. Joseph is joining me via phone. Hi, Joseph. Joseph, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Gifty. Amazing. So you went on the ground and you spoke to the people. What share with us, you know, the sense you get from their from the from the conversation you had um with them. Are they expectant of a real change or are they really, you know, here and there, so 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 to speak? Well, so you get a sense that these are voters who have expectations and some of them believe these expectations have been met, others do not think so. And there are those who agree that the expectations have not been met yet. They are hopeful of better times if things remain as they are, that is if they stick to the current candidate. And so uh, these are constituents who are very expectant, they are very demanding, and uh, they understand their area very well and they are clear in their mind that, I mean, they have the power to determine who leads them and they are going to make their voices heard uh, come December 7. And so uh, what we found on the ground is going to be very interesting. Uh, the candidates will be engaging them as well on the show. Uh, these are people who are going out convincing the individuals and asking that they vote for them. And the candidates are very much aware of the information that we also picked on the ground, and they both believe that they have the chance to win. And so it is a case of uh, voters who are eager and also uh, candidates who are claiming that they have a better chance of winning. So it will be quite an interesting conversation we have this evening. And certainly, earlier I spoke to MFA Apao on the election brief and she took me through what to expect um, tonight. But for those who missed the show uh, at 1.30, Joseph, take us through again. Give us a highlight of what to expect tonight on radio. And so first, there will be a detailed presentation on the constituency. I will be explaining to our listeners why we are looking at the identity constituency. And in simple terms, the constituency that has been won the same number of times by the NPP and the NDC is twice. The constituency that does not retain its parliament, its MPs, either you lose in the primaries or you lose in the main election. And so that is why we are talking about the identity constituency. We are again going to be telling our listeners on what the key issues are from the constituency, uh, what the constituents make of the performance of the current MP, and what they make of the NBC's candidate, who is interestingly related to uh, the current second lady. Uh, so that is also another dynamic that changes everything at all. We will, be, we will again be telling you, making projections in terms of our analysis here by the experts, the team that we have here are joining you that monitor selection closely, that have been studying the data, that are making projections as to uh, which individual they expect to win, as well as uh, which candidate in terms of the presidential election will also win in this particular area. And if I'm to see you a bit, uh, the trend is that uh, the party whose candidate wins the parliamentary seat tends to be the party whose presidential candidate wins the main election. And so that is also another interesting thing to note about the constituency. And so we're making all those projections and giving the sense a sense. I mean, this is a show that you just cannot miss if you are interested in politics, if you are concerned about the issues affecting people, every part of the country. This is something that will be coming to you because your constituency will definitely be one, unless it's a constituency that is not... Are part of the carefully selected ones. And I'm clear mm. in my mind that a lot of those constituencies will be touching on are those ones that everyone will want to talk about because of their impact on the national elections proper. And so it's a show that obviously you cannot miss. And we should all tune in at 8 p.m. Mm. And, 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 jo and Joseph, whilst we are urging listeners to sh tune in at 8 p.m. on radio, uh, we also want to find out how can I be um, um, involved if I'm a listener? Is there a way that I can be involved? Tell us. And so you can, you can send in the text. The text lines will be activated, and there will be an opportunity to reach us via social media handles. Also, uh, if you have questions for the candidates that will be engaging, you can send them ahead of time or even within the show. So those uh, text lines will also be activated in the course of the show as well. And so uh, that is it in terms of the main avenue uh, for that listener engagement and connecting them to uh, via uh, the two individuals who will be contesting as well. In terms of the TV audience, you are not leaving you out. From tomorrow, you have access to the full report from the ground and also learn about the analysis. We'll be simplifying the analysis in a data-friendly manner and, and telling you what our projections are in a manner that will be easy for you to also connect with us on my journey. We are available on the, on the Joinies channel as well. And so 
I mean, this is certainly one to look forward to. And, and Joseph, this will be my final question. Um, uh, you, you are a court uh, correspondent as well, and you are on the ground talking to the people. What I want to find out is, give us a mental picture of the nature of this show. Will Joseph Akable be on the ground all the time, interacting with people? Um, is this going to be a studio-based conversation, for example? You know, open our eyes a bit. And so it will be studio-based. Uh, we will we'll do the pre-production that takes us to the location. Uh, that brings us the interesting sound bites uh, that will be done proud to uh, today as we are we are, will be having this evening and so we go on the ground we engage people and we're going to do the numbers too the analysis will also be pre-produced that will be presented live in the studio we have the thing about our the analysis we'll be doing in the studio is that uh, the team will be coming with different aspects of the conversation and so you have some will be looking at the data we have mm. those who will be making the projections those who will be looking at the issues those who will be looking at the trends and those will be telling us about the candidate, information about the candidates that you cannot find anywhere. And so right. all that diverse conversation will ensure that, I mean, once you come to the show for the next hour, then comes the interview that the Papa will be doing uh, with the candidates as well. And Mr. Ramadan will be engaged, will be speaking to you, and we'll be too. And so at the end of the discussion, which will be the last part of it, uh, with the two candidates, and also the opportunity for the questions that will be coming in, that will be put in directly to them. It will mean that at the end of the discussion, I mean, you walk away having a good sense of uh, what Adenta constituency represents and what is happening in there and why you should be interested in it, no matter yeah. which part of the country you find yourself in. Because at uh, the next president or whoever is uh, with the 20th election, the 20th election if I'm going to put it that way, you get a sense of that at the end of the show. Joseph, thank you so much for your time. Joseph Akable, the lead producer for our new show, focuses on politics, the battleground. That actually focuses on the flashpoint, if you like, all the areas where voter, vo voter um, patterns have been very um, not so favorable to one particular party. Essentially, we're starting with Adenta. You want to take a look at that this evening at 8 p.m. with MFA Apao. I'll tell you what's happening again as far as elections are concerned. The National Disaster Management Organization has been leading today a mock exercise in three regions and they're doing so to test the readiness of security services response to election-related violence for the December 7 polls. Now, this simulation exercise is currently ongoing in the Ashanti region, the northern region, and here in the greater Accra region. They're doing this to ensure there's a collaboration also between security agencies that can avoid chaos and confusion when we go out to vote. Here in the greater Accra region, the NADMO set up a polling station at Ayawaso West Wagon constituency, another one at the Tema West constituency. Of course, these areas have been ident identified as um, flashpoints. And Manuel Cranting was out there at the Ayawaso West Wagon. He will join me, but Parker, Kwesi Parker Wilson, was at the command center. Parker, so tell us, Parker joins me in the studio, by the way. Parker, tell us, what do we mean when we say a command center as far as this simulation exercise is concerned? Okay, so that is actually the operational center where they pick information from the ground and quickly deploy men to wherever the issue is to quickly avert the confusion. So you mentioned I also was for mm -hmm. example. There's a scenario where they talked about some people rampaging basically because the uh, police had fired one in short and had injured one person. A situation like this, uh, one of the uh, personnel on the ground at I also was gone called in mm -hmm. at the command center mm -hmm. where we had all the security couples there, the Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Police Service fire service, immigration, all of them yeah. gathered around the table, listening to the information that's coming in. So quickly, the Ghana Police Service boss, Caput there, said that since they had caused the problem, I mean, the police shot, the policemen there should evacuate and quickly call in the military to come and contain the situation. The military Caput there also made us aware that they had already deployed men at the district assembly. So mm. they also called uh, their, their, their personnel at the district assembly to move to the U.S. West for gone, where there's a problem, to contain the situation. So these are some of the things that uh, went on at the command center. You see, again, they made a scenario at the... In fact, I want to read for you Please some of the scenario, scenarios they dealt with. Okay. If you go to the Ningo Pram Pram for example, the scenario is that at a home polling station in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, seven voters with high temperature suspected to be COVID-19 positive cases have been denied the right to vote. 
This has created some commotion as they have refused to leave the center. Other voters and polling agents have expressed concern about the likelihood of infecting other people. One of the suspected persons begins to strip naked as she threatened to infect people if forced to leave. That's an interesting scenario. That's an interesting scenario. <laughs> interesting scenario that yeah. will go from, from, from right. there. Right. So quickly, the police couple indicated to us that there is uh, a, a COVID team, police COVID team on mm. standby mm. and that they are calling them to quickly move in to the polling station. Right. The ambulance uh, rep indicated that, I mean, they are also there and they're ready to convey the, the suspected individuals to an isolation center. Mm. Then immigration came in to say that, well, they are also going in to do contact tracing okay. to find out who and who have been in contact with these suspected individual so that, I mean, they can quickly keep the situation. So these are some of the things that are going on in the command center. And it was quite an interesting, you know, spectacle. It is. It yeah. is. And Pak, I tell you what, I've been involved in a similar simulation exercise at the mm. Ghana Armed Forces Command and right. Staff College where they put together these different um, heads of security agencies and see how they can work together. together right. And I see, and, and, and I want you to give us a mental picture of how it panned out today. How were the agencies, uh, and it was necessary, this training, because at the June, four, June 3 disaster, they realized that there wasn't enough collaboration among the security agencies, which ended up losing us some life. So give us a mental picture. How did it play out? Uh, they, were the security agencies able to coordinate among themselves so it, smoothly? From the beginning, there was a bit of a challenge where the security couples <laughs> struggled with who should move in first and who exactly. should stay and all of exactly. that. Because each security agency has its own head, exactly. its own commander. And then they are dealing with their exactly. personnel on exactly. the ground yeah. differently. So they established that going forward, they need to set up an incident command center mm -hmm. where they will they will have the security couples at the, that end. Mm. And then they will be coordinating right from the ground. So all the information that are coming in, will get to them and they will coordinate with their men. They will first of all decide mm. what to do before if they have to deploy the police, the Ghana forces yeah. or the ambulance service before they can call in the, the, their men <laughs> to go in there. So now uh, they're going to set up an incident command center where they're going to coordinate all these information that are coming from the ground during mm. the e election day. And Incident Command Centre came up because they realized there was a particular loophole when they did this. With a communication, did, exactly. When they did this particular simulation, simulation exercise. exercise. So right. this simulation exercise has been good for, if not for anything at all, one thing. One thing, That yes. there will be a loophole, there will be a gap in, in the coordination among the commanders if uh, anything like this. Something, yeah, if a, anything. a platform. So where, it's a good thing. It's yeah. a good thing. I mean, I for, for some of the... Uh, security couples I spoke to, in fact, the Ghana Police Service, uh, the immigration as well. We're like, well, it's, it's a good thing now. Yeah. Uh, they know what to do mm. when they have issues. And again, uh, it came up that some, some of the agencies do not have some equipment. Mm. And so now they are also going to make sure that they get them fully equipped mm. for the election. So these Speak are some to of these the visuals for me, Parker. Up. Is this part of what happened today? Right. So this, this visual, I'm told, came from the uh, I also West Wagon constituency. Okay. And so we received a call mm. uh, from the, the ground, a person on the ground, okay. to the command center. Okay, so this is Ayahuasca West Wagon. This is Ayahuasca West Wagon. Okay, Westworld Manuel Quantin was there. Okay. Uh, this is Jolu. Okay. No, I believe in GHS. This is where uh, okay. the police Manuel station Manuel Quantin will be joining us to speak over these visuals for us. So let me wrap up with you, Parker. Like I said, uh, you indicated that one of the things they're doing is to bring in, is to make sure that if the police is found capable or of you know creating any sort of chaotic situation that they will be to completely evacuated right. and then they'll and bring the, in the, the military, military. Will take, take over all right that, that's uh, that's it's instructive to also note that um in an in any such situation you know in a situation of chaos one of the things they taught us at the uh, uh, ghana armed forces command uh, ghana <laughs> forces command college was that they you they the police in charge the co police commander in charge still remains in charge if mm. There is a situation like this and you have to call in the the military so it's interesting that they will evacuate the entire police force yeah, because the in. explanation was that people will get agitated or be upset yeah with the police with the police so the police and the will, likelihood of attacking them is very high, is very high. so okay. it's better to safeguard the life of the police officers who are present there take them out bring in the bring military in a different to, continue, set. to exactly. continue the situation with right. that at least they'll give them the respect that okay they are not the this ones who different... the case could cause the, the, the chaos, but rather the different set of uh, security personnel. Precisely, the precisely. And Parker, thank you so much. You, you've you broken it down so well for us. Very interesting scenario they create there, by the way. A woman going um, uh, 
uh, naked. To go who naked. Go, threatening to go naked. Because and who she's has being prevented from yeah, yeah, voting because she's uh, contacted the coronavirus. Okay, <laughs> that's a very interesting. Did they name it? Did they give it a name? Usually they give the simulation. No, not, not yet. They, they said they'll do another okay. one that will give the code name. So very we well. are waiting for them when they call and ask to come and report well. It's an one. interesting, mm. but it's not just interesting. It is meant for the security agencies to learn and to be able to realize the loopholes that will be, uh, that are maybe inevitable in the course that may be inevitable in the course of um, their duty and how they can actually deal with those loopholes. Now, as Parker puts it, could be a gap in terms of coordination and it looks like they've learned a good lesson there and they have learned how to deal with it as well. You just saw those videos there. My colleague in there, um, Kranting, Emmanuel Kranting, is here in the studio to speak over the visuals for me. So, uh, Emmanuel, tell us, what are we seeing? Uh, what is happening right now? So... Um, you are seeing a man being put into um, the ambulance in a stretcher. Um, this is the aftermath of um, attack. Mm -hmm. So th th this particular scenario was simulated such that well, um, some armed gunmen mm -hmm. came to the polling center, mm -hmm. attempted to steal the ballot paper, uh, the ballot boxes. Box. And so um, the, the police of like a security on guard at the, mm -hmm. the uh, polling center mm -hmm. called for reinforcement and backup. And that's how you got a team, a joint team of, you know, the police mm -hmm. and then the military deployed mm -hmm. to the, the scene to try to intercept the, the, the you know, um, okay. um, the, the incident. And that's, that's what you're having. So this lady, for mm -hmm. instance, um, got shot, okay. okay, in the leg. And so she's unable to move. And so she has to be carried okay. um, into the, the, the bent ties. Yeah. But it was a, generally a simulation of um, the processes that you'd see typically um, you know, at a polling center from when the ballot papers are being distributed to when the very first ballot is cast okay. until, you know, the until men, an incident exactly, pops up until and an incident the pops up. Uh, security exactly. agencies mm. are called to mm. come in. Mm. Um, how did they work, the mm. police and the military? Mm. How was, I was asking Parker mm. about the coordination that existed. How did they work? Can you give us a mental mm. picture? So, I mean, they have um, walkie-talkies, if you like, um, talkbacks that yeah. they use. And so that's how they communicate. But essentially you're seeing... Um, people trying to round up mm -hmm. and circle up the uh, perpetrators, yeah. try to keep them in a circle whilst um, arresting them. So while um, um, the military, some of the military folks are getting onto the perpetrators themselves, yeah. they're seeing the police try to keep the electorate at the polling center in, in, in safety. So they are moving and controlling the crowd yeah. there okay. into a place that you say is less dangerous okay. given the circumstances. Let me bring you your own, your personal experience mm. in. You are a reporter mm. and this simulation, I mean, whatever happens on election mm. day, there will be reporters mm. there. Mm. Walk us through how it was for you um, mm. reporting on such a such an incident. Definitely, well, so, well, yeah, for, I also was mm. going by election, yeah. for instance, in 2019. Um, I happen to have been in a studio, so mm -hmm. I wasn't on the field, but the picture they give me is almost something that I saw today, today. on the field okay. in that simulation. So you're having people brandishing um, guns with the police trying to combat them in the same instant. And so generally, you know, it's not, it's not a matter of um, uh, <laughs> joke at all. I, I, I really thank God that it was, it was just a simulation. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. But did you get the sense that reporters who were present there mm -hmm were able to, I mean, they were able to do good on the feet thinking and calculation mm. as to how they can report this mm. safely because mm. that has also become a very key point, mm. uh, how reporters can work safely. Did you get the sense that not just you, but the other reporters that were there were able to operate, you know, safely? So in the debriefing after the simulation, uh, these are some of the things that popped up. Okay. So, of course, the journalists who were deployed to the place were told that it's a simulation exercise. So, most of them are standing and, you know, thinking Watching that, it happen. you know, and okay. trying to get the best angles to the story. But generally, and, and if you follow the visuals that will play mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, we you, can put some you, of the visuals you, up. You, you see me trying to, first of all, find a place that I think is safe, safe. enough. Then I could do my, my reporting. So, in the middle of all those, you're trying to put commentary on the pictures mm. and also finding a place that is safe enough for you. Yeah. And I think that this simulation exercise, you know, has, has taught um, uh, reporters what, uh, you know, to, to be doing. And, and one thing that the, the police officer, officer in charge at DSPSCA do at, at a debriefing said that this has revealed that there's some bit of disconnect 
in mm -hmm. terms of the communication between or like among the men on the ground. Right. So people are moving in singles instead of moving in teams mm. and so on and so forth. Uh, generally, I mean, uh, um, um, you'll see um, later the uh, pictures that we'll show you. Great, mm. great, great stuff, great stuff. So like you had, um, Quincy Parker Wilson reported on what they found was the loophole with this simulation exercise, how they're going to bridge that. And Manuel here is also reporting on what they found at the debriefing, that what the security agencies found as a loophole. So great exercise there to, you know, bring out all the things that need to be addressed before we get to the real deal. Um, but it's been interesting. One thing, one, one more thing uh, that we need to, to, to do. Manuel is trying to tell me something. So, I mean, the, the MC of the um, area, mm -hmm. uh, Madame Sandra Hinkra, was, was there and, you know, she's, um, assuring the public, as it were, of attempt by the municipality um, in conjunction, if you like, with the main political actors within the constituency. Mm. She mentions that at uh, Music, there's a municipal, um, you know, uh, uh, security council. They had a meeting, yeah. give um, each of the um, aspirants, if you like, the candidates, the NPP, the NDC, and any other one that will pop up guidelines on how to operate um, in the few days that are leading to the e election okay. and and she's been answering quite strongly okay. to allegations of like accusations that the office of the mc is in the camp of the incumbent champion working against the ndc's parliamentary candidate john dumelo he says yeah. that nothing of the sort is 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 exactly. in the happening and mentions in fact I, i'm sure you'd remember that what, uh, during the registration um voters registration exercise yeah. john dumelo released a statement that um alleged that the police um, stood aloof while some of his agents mm, were yeah. attacked. Yeah. She mentions categorically that John Dumelo apologized for that statement. Um, at that meeting? At, at that meeting. I see. And so, I mean, um, these are the, the, the things that popped up. Very well. There. Well, John Dumelo himself is pretty accessible. We can get his thoughts on that as well, uh, just to clarify things. But Manuel, thank you so much. Manuel Cranting there, my colleague who was on the ground for us. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. We're talking about the People's National Convention today. They'll be holding their National Congress to elect presidential candidates and national executives ahead of the 2020 general elections this weekend. But it's exactly 81 days to the general polls and we want to find out how is the PNC preparing towards December 7. I'm joined in the studio, my special guest today, National Chairman for the PNC, Bernard Mona, will talk about the PNC, also seek his views on national issues and decisions taken by the Electoral Commission so far. Mr. Mona, you're welcome. Um, let me try to... Thank you. Right. So, I first of all, let me just indicate to you that you can send us your your, your message, uh, WhatsApp message, uh, on the number that's display that will be dis displayed on your television. The number is zero five four zero one zero nine zero zero nine. Um, we'd love to hear from you. What questions do you have for the PNC? Do you think they deserve your attention at all? Let that question flow. So you're welcome once again. Thank you, Gifty. How how are, are you campaigning at all? Is the party campaigning at all? Um, we've not elected our presidential candidate yet but okay. the party is campaigning particularly in constituencies where we have elected our parliamentary candidates you can see buoyancy in the work of the various parliamentary candidates across the country i um, asked because i wanted to ask you how is the campaign going um we individually we've been crisscrossing the length and breadth of the country um as i speak to you some members of the party who are gunning for positions have already left accra they are in other regions mm. yesterday somehow almost all of us were in the eastern region because they were doing their eastern regional conference to elect their delegates for the national delegates conference and so we're all there okay. and so i'm sure that with that individual campaigns are going on party campaigns have not started yet because we virtually are putting our manifesto on hold until the presidential candidate is elected. And once the presidential candidate is elected, goes through the manifesto, add one or two, or subtract from the manifesto, then we can pu publicize the manifesto. And I'm sure it will come to add to the debate on manifestos in this country. Which we'll we are... see how that goes. But seriously, 81 days to an election and you don't have a flag bearer, should people take the PNC seriously? Well, I don't know, because the PNC message has been consistent. We have been 
promoting some basic ideas that will liberate the people of Ghana. We have been championing on many other policy issues and options, some of which have been stolen, or let me call it, have been uh, taken by successive governments, poor as they have implemented those things. Those things have tend to be the savior of our nation in many fronts. If you take the National Education Trust Fund, you know that it was the PNC that proposed the idea in 1998 when we met in Kumasi. The, what, G the GET Fund? The GET Fund. And eventually, this was the time the students of Ghana were engaged in the Mobrawa struggle. And therefore, the PNC said, instead of meeting the students with bullets and killing them, they are our own children. Why do you do that? Let's find a solution to the problems that they were bringing forward. And the challenges, in our opinion, was to establish the Ghana Education Trust Fund. It is poorly implemented, but again, that has come to help to contain students' unrest in this country. If you take the issue of national health insurance, it was the PNC that mooted the idea, particularly so that Ghana was engulfing the cash and carry system. Today, the PNC idea is being implemented poorly, but I, I say that it is one that has saved the people of Ghana. So many Ghanaians come to realize that the PNC is a party of ideas, the PNC is the party that, if allowed to win elections, its policies will be able to liberate them from the economic quagmire that they find themselves. So the party is not new. The fact that we are to elect somebody who will be our standard bearer mm. to lead us into the election does not mean that um, many people in Ghana don't know about the Why PNC. Why do you think the PNC, if after all that you said, that these ideas came from you, I mean, the people of Ghana are not dumb. They should be able to know that this idea actually was first mentioned on a PNC platform, but we had the PPA, the NDC doing it, we had the NPP doing it. Why do you think the PNC is still performing extremely poorly in elections? Probably as because, many years probably as because I say that a number of stakeholders have conspired to make the PNC not attractive. Sometimes Who are these stakeholders? Including the media. One of, I'm, I'm happy to be here today. But when the media you are going around searching for people to empanel for your programs. Most often the PNC and its membership come as an afterthought. Indeed, I have come to many programs of yours only when either the NDC is protesting that they don't want to appear before your shows or the MPP is protesting for one reason or the other. Then they suddenly realize and find favor that there is... But people won't just, people won't just come to you if you don't make yourself available and make yourself a How? formidable hang You, you hang just on. called me. Uh, you so you just sent to... me a message. So, your so... producer sent me a message. Uh -huh. And I asked what time. And I appeared before you. Okay, so, so when you the don't send making... us an invite, I cannot just walk no, into joy no, but that's the and thing. then start that's talking. That's the thing. You see, we live in a world where you are telling me that the NDC, NPP, they just walk into you your know, studios and on, start talking? Hang on, You are a political party. A political party is a serious business. If you are in serious business, what you do is market yourself and tell people, hey, I'm here. And when you say, I hey, I'm here, hang on. I am let, let me just make my, 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 my argument. Hang I am hang surprised hang because hang you when, have you all the time on, to when you start on a flawed uh, premises, oh, no, the no, no, conclusion no. will certainly wait, wait. not be valid. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not seeking, I'm not seeking uh, uh, correction of my script. Hang on. What I'm doing is to give you an idea of the reason why perhaps you think we have not reached out to you. And I'm saying that if, you, that if we are engaging the NPP and the NDC, they have put themselves out there, they have said something, and we go to them we talk, to, talk, to talk to them about it. You said you are organizing your, um, your um, Congress, and we are coming to you to talk about the Congress. But until you put yourself out there for us to see what you're doing, we, we, we won't be able to reach out to you and say, let the people hear from you. So um, you can't put the media in the conspirators, but that's okay. Let's focus on why again you think you, you say you, 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 you are trying to exonerate the media from I'm not. the team I'm of not. conspirators I'm, not. I'm telling you what i think okay. but that's okay your i'm here to ask you the yeah. questions for the people of ghana I'm, so I'm let's go for the answers for let's go for the answers and the thing is it's been years of the ex of ex existence of the pnc but the question again was why have you performed poorly you say there are stakeholders who are conspiring against you let me let the me media make, is one of them the who media the is rest? one of them well, the media is one of them the, there's no doubt that the media's role in magnifying any event in this country is huge and therefore if the media decides in the manner that i think they have conspired against the pnc to ensure that they constantly promote the idea of the mpp and ndc and when as can el bayobo will say and when you say that two plus two, and I say the answer is four, and somebody from another angle come and say four, 
then you turn around to tell me that, oh, um, Bernard Mona supports these people's position. How can that be the case? So what you have tried, in effect, is that when a PNC man speaks, and speaks against something that the ruling government is for, then ab issue, you are consigned to the NDC. We've consistently spoken can I, to you can I, can I Can I make the point? People of the when ANC. somebody speaks against something that the NDC is opposed to, then ab issue, you are consigned to speaking. That's how you see it. That is how it has been reported. Because I finish a program, sometimes I initiate a certain move. And just when I initiate a move, some other person is called in. And the next report is that the PNC supports this position of this political party. When you do that, it is a deliberate thing to ensure that my voice is subsumed by what you perceive as the bigger voice. Now, is, if is you move, problem you if you see, even move is that to parliament, the problem you see across the it's, media, it is, the media it is, that is, is I'm not just taking joy on. I'm just, no, it's, it's fine if I'm you just want to take us I'm, on. I'm but, just but, taking but that. I've already is, explained yeah, to you. So I'm talking generally about the media. Okay. Now, if you go to parliament, we have a constitution that says that we should have multi-party democracy. When you go to parliament, it is a two-party parliament. Because the PNC has not done well wait, enough to wait, be represented wait, wait. In, the, in parliament. If you take your time, you will get where I'm at the drift. Okay. Parliament is housed by majority and minority. So whether you are PNC, you are independent, or you are any other person and you find your way into parliament, you must acquiesce to being a majority or a minority. Mm. In that way, you are consumed. So you have to align. You are consumed. Parliament. You understand. You so even when you parliament. go to parliament, that is the, the difficulty that our membership face. When they go to parliament, you are expecting that, okay, which party constitutes the majority? So they go and sit with the majority, and consistently the PNC has sat with the majority, irrespective of the party that has been in parliament. So if it is the MPP, we sit with the ma majority. If it is the NDC, we have always sat with the majority. So in that way, we are consumed. Is that the only reason why the I, PNC has not been able... I am telling you because majority of Ghanaians then say that if you go to parliament, we try as much as possible to vote for some of you to go and represent a different version. Yeah. And all we see is that you go and then you are consumed okay. by this. Okay. So why would the people do this? And I'm saying that it's a conspiracy from parliament itself that they should find a way to ensure that persons who come independent, who belong to other political parties, are consumed. So when you go and then, as they have it, the HIP system, when you go to parliament, then the HIP says that you should do this, then yeah. you are seeing that you are not conforming to the HIP system. It means that you are not within this. So that is something that we have persistently insisted that, look, we need to change the standing orders of the House to reflect that we have multi-party democracy mm -hmm. in our nation. Aside that, look, I have insisted that there may be genuine difficulties. Hey, you go and elect a presidential candidate. The people of Ghana agree to the policy content of the party. Mm. But they may not necessarily like the presidential candidate that you have brought forward. And therefore, even as they cherish the ideas that you have brought, you know, this thing is about favor. If they don't favor your presidential candidate, you will not. And that is why I have insisted. Look, from 1992, when President Le Mans became president, that is the highest the PNC has chalked, 6.7%. Since then, we have had a decline. And it is painful that we have had a decline. And so we are trying, and this Congress, fortunately, mm. the old face of our party, Edward Mahama, says that he's no more contesting. It has given new, or new life and new lease into the party. We have three persons who have already filed for presidential candidates. Let's go for the names. Who are We there? have Reverend Samuel J. Debra, mm. um, the man I call the Ebri man. Who is he? Um, he has been a long-standing member of the party in okay. the 2016 elections. He was appointed by Dr. Edward Mama as the campaign director of the elections. And mm. so he is coming to contest. We have um, something I will go beat. Asaki, uh, that is a favorite name to the media. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the uh, Honorable David Apasre, who is also contesting. So three persons are contesting. And so mm. we are looking up to see which one the delegates will, will elect. And I, I'm confident that any one of these mm. that is elected will be able to package the person. And probably this time, the media conspiracy will turn so that we'll also now concentrate and give um, some hope to the PNC. And of course, what I'm, not, I'm not sure about your media conspiracy, but these three men, uh, who is your favorite? I would have thought that 
I'm not a chairman. Let me hold it there. But I would have thought, honestly, if you ask my personal view, that, look, let's vacillate away from the notion that the PNC is a northern party. But that is my personal view. Okay. So moving away from the northern party, that gives us uh, Reverend Sam E.J. Debra. Yeah. That is my personal view, but I don't know what the rest of the delegates will be thinking. Okay. If you are a delegate, I want to hear from you uh, uh, on our WhatsApp platform. But, and I have a lot of questions. But unfortunately, we have to quickly rush to the Electoral uh, Commission. Uh, so let's take a look at that place, what's happening there. there. Well, there's some prayers going on there. So these are live visuals coming to you from the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. They are about to tell us what to do, how to do it as far as the, reg uh, the exhibition of the voter register is concerned. We'll go there right after the prayer is set. Um, but what, what do you make of what's going to happen today at the Electoral Commission? They are going to register, uh, uh, exhibit the voters register tomorrow. Well, I, I don't think that there is anything dramatic about it. I have said that the Electoral Commission has put us through a lot of strains. Um, political parties, you do know. And I said this before the Electoral Commission embarked on this needless new voters register that we have, that they were going to eat into the time of political parties. Because no serious political party would want to be organizing your activities when the Electoral Commission is embarking on registration. Okay. And so now they are taking us through the various what I call protocols before we get to the election day. So we'll talk a bit more about that. But let's go to the commissioner, uh, the chairperson, Jean Mensah, speaking now. From the Electoral Commission, I welcome you to another edition of Let the Citizen Know, the Commission's platform for regular engagement with the citizens through you, our media partners. We thank the Almighty God for his faithfulness and for seeing the Commission through a successful voters' registration exercise, an activity that is instrumental in the electoral process as far as credible, fair, transparent elections are concerned. The purpose of this engagement today is to inform our distinguished stakeholders of preparations we have put in place for the exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register. As an institution responsible for national elections, regulations 22.1 and 23.1 of CI 91 and join the Commission to compile a Provisional Voters Register for each polling station, indicating the particulars and photograph of each person whose application was received and accepted during the registration and to display it for public inspection. As such, the Commission will display the Provisional Voters Register for, the public, for public inspection and correction at designated exhibition centers throughout the country from tomorrow, Friday, the 18th day of September to Friday, the 25th day of September 2020 from 7 a.m. each day until 6 p.m including Saturday and Sunday. The exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register will take place sim simultaneously at all 33,367 exhibition centers across the country. I'd like to emphasize that all exhibition centers will be open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, and all registered voters are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity to verify their details. <clears throat> now I come to the importance of the exhibition exercise. From our experience over the years, participation in the voters' exhibition exercise has always been low. Citizens have not found it worth their while to visit the exhibition centers to check their details on the provisional voters' register. We wish to emphasize that the exhibition exercise is an important aspect of the entire registration and election process. It is therefore important that voters take the time to check their details. As you may be aware, the voters register as it stands is provisional. This means that it is not final. And that is why the law recognized the need for the exhibition process to enable all registered voters check and verify their details and ensure that the necessary corrections and omissions are effected 
before the register is certified. The voters register will only be deemed final after the exhibition exercise is completed and after authentication by magistrates who for the purpose of this exercise serve as the district registration review officers. Ladies and gentlemen, if for nothing at all, the verification of a person's details is important for this very reason, as it affords each voter the opportunity to check whether his or her details are on the register and to request for an inclusion of his or her name where this is missing. The exhibition of the provisional voters register also affords prospective voters an avenue to verify the accuracy of their details captured on the register and gives them the opportunity to correct errors such as the wrong spelling of their names, the wrong capturing of their ages, amongst others. The other reasons for the exhibition exercise include the following. It provides an avenue for the objection of names of unqualified voters on the register. Any person entitled to be registered as a voter may object to the inclusion of names of persons on the provisional voters register if they believe that they are qualified to be registered as voters. It also allows a registered voter to cause the removal of persons who are deceased from the register. It also allows a registered voter to replace poor quality or damaged voter ID cards. And it also allows a registered voter to change their names. Voters requesting for change of name must have published the said change in the Gazette and they must have been provided with documentary evidence to that effect at the exhibition center. In the light of the importance of this exercise, therefore, we entreat all registered voters to take time to verify their details in the voters register before its certification as final by the district registration review officers nationwide. I now come to the subject of mode of exhibition. During this period of exhibition, the physical copies of the 2020 Provisional Voters Register will be placed at all 33,367 exhibition centers to enable prospective voters verify their details as captured during the registration exercise and make requests for amendments or insertions where necessary. It is important to note that all persons who registered at the various district offices must go to the assigned polling stations during the exhibition exercise and not the district offices. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in a bid to ensure the safety and security of our stakeholders and to make life easier for all prospective voters, the commission will deploy a mobile telephoning system also known as the SMS, to allow prospective voters check their details using their mobile phones for a fee of 30 pesos. A prospective voter may access the system by simply texting his or her voter's ID card number to 1422, and immediately his or her details will pop up. With this simple process, a voter with a click of the button can obtain the following details. His or her name, voter ID card number, age, gender, polling station code, polling station name, district, and region. This facility will be available to all voters throughout the period from Friday the 18th of September to Friday the 25th of September 2020. We are aware that a number of citizens have tried to access this platform before it was activated. We wish to assure you all that your funds have not gone to waste. Our team has compiled your details and the system will forward your information to your phone once the platform goes live tomorrow. Therefore, we urge you not to re-access this system. It is important to highlight that a prospective voter would need to visit the exhibition center 
if he or she notices an error in the details that come up from the SMS service. This only means that there were errors in the details taken and recorded at the point of registration. And this may be recorded if the voter so wishes. Sorry, this may be corrected if the voter so wishes. In that case, the voter would need to visit the exhibition center. For the information of the general public, the commission would deploy 5,000 biometric verification devices to selected exhibition centers across the country. The device will be operated alongside the physical copies of the provisional voters register. This device will enable the prospective voter verify both biometric details, that is fingerprint and facial features, as well as biographic data, that is one's age, name, etc. The deployment of the 5,000 devices would also afford the, the commission the opportunity to pilot the devices. Recruitment and training of exhibition officials. To ensure efficiency at all the exhibition centers throughout the country, the commission has recruited a total of 73,107 exhibition officers to arrange and oversee the exercise. They include exhibition supervisors, district exhibition officers, sorry, deputy exhibition officers, verification officers, key trainers, technicians, and COVID-19 ambassadors. Every category has been provided comprehensive training on their respective roles. We trust that our officials will be professional, efficient, and pleasant to all who visit the centers. The Commission is desirous and ensuring in its, of ensuring the safety and security of its stakeholders. As a result, we have recruited one COVID-19 ambassador to each of the 33,367 polling centers, sorry, exhibition centers, and they have been tasked to enforce the COVID-19 protocols put in place by the Commission. Logistics management. All materials required for the successful conduct of the exhibition exercise have been procured and supplied to the regions and districts in adequate quantities. We are confident that the comprehensive plan put in place will ensure that there are no such shortages of any materials at any of our centers. Now we come to the settlement of claims and objections on the provisional voters register. As part of the process of ensuring a credible voters register, the commission has, with, in collaboration with the Supreme Court, appointed district registration review officers who are district court magistrates throughout the country. They have been assigned the responsibility of making decisions on all complaints and objections that are raised during the exhibition exercise. The district registration review officers would also authenticate the provisional register by endorsing it. The district registration review officers are required to communicate all decisions in writing to the Electoral Commission. And the Commission shall, within 14 days after, after parties to the case have been informed, comply with the decision of the district registration review officers unless a certified notification on appeal to the, Supreme, to the High Court is brought to its attention. Observation of the Commission's COVID-19 protocols. As part of the Commission's commitment to ensure the safety and security of its stakeholders at the Exhibition Center, the following safety protocols will be observed at all our centers. Any person entering the exhibition center or queuing to enter the center must wear a face mask. Upon entering the exhibition center, a thermometer gun will be used to check the temperature of individuals. A maximum distance of one meter between registered voters in the queue will be enforced at all times throughout all the centers. In centers where we have the biometric verification devices, 
our officers will ensure to clean the surfaces of the devices with wipes before an applicant's fingerprints are verified. The commission will provide hand sanitizers for registered voters to sanitize their fingers and before leaving the centers. Our temporary officials have also been provided with the appropriate personal protective equipment to ensure that they are safe for the week-long activity. Now to other important details of the exhibition. The Commission will also display an exceptions list comprising the names of registered voters who have flouted the regulations on the, of the registration exercise. The persons on the exceptions list cannot vote for the upcoming election. The Commission will also display the multiples list. This contains names of persons who have engaged in multiple registration and therefore cannot vote in the upcoming election. You can still check your voters' registration details if you cannot find your ID card. Once you are a registered voter, your photograph and details are captured and will be displayed in the register. Note, however, that being in possession of the card makes it much easier for you to check your details on the register. The current exhibition exercise is a display of persons who were captured during the just ended registration exercise. Therefore, there will be no voter registration ongoing during this period, except for corrections and updates on the already existing data. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your attention. Before we close the curtains to the curtains to today's edition of the Let the Citizen Know, I take this opportunity on behalf of the Electoral Commission of Ghana to encourage all of you our distinguished stakeholders to participate actively in the exhibition exercise that starts tomorrow. Your participation in this process will contribute to ensuring the credibility and the integrity of the voters register which would be used as the foundation document for the 2020 presidential and parliamentary election. We thank you all for your time and your cooperation, and we thank you for continuing to believe and trust in us. May God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. Thank you so much for your attention. So there you had it live from the Electoral Commission's headquarters, the EC boss herself speaking about what is going to happen starting tomorrow. It's a one-week uh, program, and she is taking some questions there. But essentially, she talks about what has to be done, the recruitment process. They're starting tomorrow, and it's ending on the 25th, uh, uh, which is next Friday. It's starting, she says, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., including weekends, and you need to visit the centers to be able to check. But you can also do so on your mobile phone, and apparently some people have already done so. So you've had 30 pesos, you know, deducted from your uh, credits. She says those people will be... Uh, will be you get your details back so you don't need to do it again you don't need to engage the service again it costs 30 pesos to check on 1422 you can check with your id you can check and you get your name your id number your gender your age polling station the polling station code the district and the region all will pop up on your mobile phone um as well she says that those who uh, registered at the district offices the aged you know pe people with disabilities you you need to go to uh the assigned centers you don't need to go back to the district offices for that and that biometric 500 biometric devices will be deployed that will help you to check your fingerprints you know the facial recognition and everything 5,000 I beg your pardon and everything they've recruited 73,107 people for this and they have one COVID ambassador to each polling uh, center 
There will be, by the way, she says, an exception list. And that exception list includes voters who, they say, have flouted regulations. We may get, want to get a bit more details on that one. And there will be a multiples list. If you find your name on the multiples list, it means that you registered multiple times and you cannot be allowed to vote. If you're on the exception list as well, you have flouted regulations, you cannot be allowed to, um, to vote. And... Um, yeah, she talked about the observation of the protocols, etc. Um, they are also getting district registration review offices in collaboration with the courts to, to get uh, judges who will be assigned to deal with claims, objections, etc. And when she's speaking again, we'll go back to the Electoral uh, uh, Commission. But, Mr. Mona, you're here with me. It's good so we can get your thoughts as well. What do you make of all that she said? Well... It is their responsibility to be telling the people of Ghana what they should expect in the um, voter exhibition. Mm. There is no doubt that there is no time on the side of the Electoral Commission. So you can see that an exercise of this magnitude, they are giving just seven days for it. Is yeah, seven days not enough? Well, you can check because this exercise, I'm here in Accra. Okay? Mm. I have many activities and I'm sure many other persons who are employed, particularly all our members of parliament are in Accra. They have to go back to their various polling stations, mm. carry their family and all that. And she said that you can do that on your phone too. How would you know? They will give you the details mm -hmm. that you are registered, yes. but your name could be on the exception list. Mm. Your name could actually be on the multiple registrants list. Mm. And so the fact that you have gotten it, that you are a registered voter, does not preclude that you are a possible candidate on the exception list. Well, maybe that's a question that our um, reporter on the ground can put to the EC so that we get some clarification. She didn't mention. No, that I, I am just telling you, you because once you are registered, your name is captured. Yes. Okay. And so on the system, if you type the 1420 and then you get the information, she will tell you you are registered. Mm. But the fact that you are registered does not necessarily mean that you are qualified to vote on that day mm. according to her submission which i'll come to yeah what and i was saying was that what we can do is to find out from them if i key in my details on the mobile phone will they give me all the details including whether or not i am on the exception list or on the multiple list but i get one, the point you're yeah making. so that that is one point so this is the time people have to now convey their families to go back to various registration centers to now go and confirm and you see that there is no time and I'm sure that if you were working mm. for Joy, and then all of a sudden you tell them that you are all going to various places that you registered, yeah. you will see that your employer may not be able to grant you the opportunity to go. Okay. So it's, it's putting a lot of strain in the way of voters. So at the end of the day, you check what is going to happen. They turn out to be very low. Okay, Let, I'll come back to that. Let's go to the Electoral, Electoral Commission headquarters again. Come 7 December, you cannot actually vote. Is that okay? Mm. The it would, mm. Yes, the multiple registration, I, I can't actually um, tell the, the figure, but we can actually um, cross check and then make the number of um, multiple uh, registrations available to you. But there are certain decisions that we actually uh, look at. Uh, some clearly by the software you can actually see that they are double registrations and we didn't have any problem with that. There are others also that the um, adjudication uh, board also um, sat on, you know, those cases which are not so clear. So we we'll look at the um, numbers of the multiple registration and they make it available to you. I think you asked the question about taking legal action against those who have engaged in multiple registration, which is against the law, legitimately, you know, the commission can't take legal action against them. But I do believe that there's a time for everything. At the moment, we are, we are geared towards conducting free, fair, and transparent elections, and therefore, we are focusing our attention to, to, to that area. But I believe that, you know, we are you know, going forward you know, these are decisions that could be, you know, taken. But they could some legal action could be brought against them. We are this. We will be deciding whether or not to publish their names. But I think the commission would publish their names on its website with their photographs and so on. 
and show you know the number of times that they they registered with the different attires and, and that sort of thing. So be assured that you know we intend to you know call out persons who have engaged in illegalities. And once the process of exhibition is completed, you know their images and their names will be published on our website. I think that you asked the question the six to about the thirty persons. Unfortunately, you know this service is attracting a fee of thirty persons. Uh, once you access it, you know I think you 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 are required to pay thirty persons, and that's why I did mention that for those who have accessed it previously, before the system went live. You know, they do not need to re-access it. Their information and their details have been captured. Once the system goes live tomorrow, the needed and the necessary information will be made available to them. I think you ask the question, why do we charge? And I think it's the same, you know, because it's a system that has been set up. They did not require, you know, the commission to make an up front. We didn't make payments for it. So it was sort of the service providers you know, to take care of the cost of setting it up. And it's not a charge that is going to really be a benefit a profit making endeavor, but it's really to you know, take care of the setup costs of the system. And that's why the 30 pesos is, is being charged to citizens who access the, the, the platform. I think I, I try to you know, go behind the scenes during this time to find out the number of the, on the multiples list. And it's, at the moment, we have a total of 6,080. 6,080. And, you know, this would be made public, as I mentioned, would put their details, their names and their photographs, you know, per district, per region, on our platform, on our website for, for all to see. So thank you. No, thank you. Uh, Madam, in your presentation, you mentioned that people will be allowed to challenge those they perceive to be underage. Is this not a very tricky and slippery freedom you are giving to people who would want to go to these verification centers to perpetuate the party's interests? So that if I know your stronghold, I come there with people to come and challenge the the age and qualification of people who are coming there to to verify their registration. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important to note that this is not a free room we are giving to. It's enshrined is a requirement that is in law, so it's not a creation of this commission. It's always been part of our law. And if you reside in a community and you notice that minors have, you know, had the opportunity to get onto the register. I think you have the evidence and you are, you are able to object to their being on the register. It's important to emphasize that it is not any room that this commission is creating. And I think let's make that clear. This is contained in our CI 91 and has been in force for the last uh, four years, I believe, and several years before that. So it's not an open avenue that this commission is creating. It's something that has been in existence for a long time. But it still provides an avenue. And I, I believe that's why you have the magistrates. There's a process. So not everybody can get up and you can challenge and it will not go anywhere. You have to have legitimate reasons and evidence before you challenge it. And we have distinguished magistrates who serve as the DRROs who would be hearing these cases. So we do believe that they have enough experience to ensure that nobody brings frivolous reasons to get people off the register and, and get away with it. So I believe that this, is, this process has been tried and tested. It's a credible process. And it's one of the avenues that has been put in place to clean our register and ensure that it is credible ahead of the election. I'm sorry you cannot. Okay, keep I think, uh, let's, move, let's give the chance to others. Thank you very much. My name is William Gento from P7. 
My question has to do with the ambassadors you, you are about to deploy to over the over 33,000 centers. My question is simple. Who is bearing the cost? And how much is involved? Is it the COVID ambassador? Yes. Thank you. That was the last question. Mrs. Mensah, Mr. Ati. Oh, what was it? Um, this question is inspired by letting the citizens know. So for the sake of the citizens. Um, Mom, in the event that a card is faulty or that is wrong, you do the corrections and then you will withdraw the old one, you take it from the person, and then there and there issue a new one that bears the corrected names of what of you. Is that the process? Okay. Madam, let's go with the COVID ambassador. The COVID ambassadors are officials, temporary officials of the EC. And therefore, the state bears the cost because it's part of our budget. And these are officials who would be at the exhibition centers to ensure that the COVID protocols and the safety protocols put in place by the commission are adhered to and observed. And so it's part of our budget, and the cost will be borne out of our budget. Be assured that it's not part of the, um, the accessing fee for the SMS. <laughs> it's not included in the 30 pesos, please. Thank you. Yes, um, when you get to the exhibition center, you will find out that there are two forms of food. Corrections. We have major correction, and then we have minor. So the minor ones are the age, sex, and other things. When you come to the major correction, for instance, bad photograph. I hope you get me. Bad photograph. That is where maybe a change in the police station what code. This is where you would be required to go to the district office now to change your card. And at that point, the old card is what? Collected. And the new card is what? Given to you. So if you have a bad photograph, if you want to change the police station code, you know, if it's a major correction, that is where um, changing of the card is involved. You get to the um, district office and you are given a new card and the old one is corrected. The, the spelling of names, those ones are minor um, corrections. The exhibition officer can even, um, um, once your photograph is there, and then all your particulars are there, they can even ask you to even use the card. You know, it doesn't actually change anything. If it is a major one, a complete change of name, maybe um, you, you've got, um, got married, and you are changing the whole name. You know, it's a major correction, and that one would involve the, uh, the, the, the giving of a new card. Thank you. Well, this is uh, still the pause in Megiti and Dopia. We're coming live from the Electoral Commission headquarters where some very interesting uh, revelations are being made. If you're part of the 6,080 people on the multiple registration list, you will not be allowed to uh, vote. And the Electoral Commission says it will make de details of that figure and those on the exemptions list available on their website. We'll be looking out for that. Um, but, well, you, you, you need to check. We are starting tomorrow. You need to go and check whether you're on that list and whether or not you'll be allowed to vote. Ms. Amona, you are sharing your thoughts on what here, what she has said so far. I want, to, I want to hear your comment on the exceptions list and the multiple registration list. Those people will not be allowed to vote. Well, I, I don't know where she drives her power from because it appears that she is now the judge. If I, you say I'm on the multiple registration list, first question is that how did I get onto the multiple registration because this is the Electoral Commission prior to the new voters register, indicated that there were multiple registrants on the voters register, the reason for which they had to discuss the old one. So if today you are telling us and admitting that there is multiple registration, you, the Electoral Commission, should rather be the one we should send to court. Why? Because you lied, you deceived the people of Ghana that you were going to create a perfect system that will not carry these impurities. And at the end of the day, you are telling us that 
the major reasons for which you were embarking on a new exercise. You failed in them. So who is the candidate for court? You are the candidate. That is the first point. Now, you, by some magic, uh, my name has been recorded twice or on the voters' register. I only went to Sankana Town Hall to go and register. I didn't go anywhere. How my name is replicated on your system should be your duty, not me. But how in any case, person, in how any case, this is a biometric. This is a biometric system. Intentionally. This is a biometric system. And why? We told the Electoral Commission that look, people were going to have the possibility of doing a new voters register, uh, multiple registration, because you were not doing the registration all in one day. You were not doing it in one period. You did it in phases of six. So if they found out you so registered twice, the point twice, is that the point should, is that the point is that, that no. The point is that you, the Electoral Commission, failed to put in the check that will ensure that people doesn't get onto the uh, registrator. But it doesn't change the fact that those so who have the Electoral Commission, have the, the Electoral law. Commission is actually the one that allowed them the opportunity to enter the voting. But it register. doesn't make change so the I'm fact that, that you have broken the instead law. Instead of the Electoral Commission thinking about prosecuting other people, the Electoral Commission should be prosecuted. But the people that who is, have committed the offense... That is your view. My view is that the Electoral Commission is rather the one that abetted in the commissioning of this, this crime. And therefore, the Electoral Commission should be prosecuted. They should be the candidates for, 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 for court. That is one. Number two, so if you say my name is on the multiple register and I come to prove to you that, look, I only did the registration once. I have not gone anywhere to go and do another registration. So you have to take my name from But that there. requires a, an investigation. But you have to take my name because I can prove to you that I only registered at one place. And you are telling me that I have done multiple registration. And I have seen at some registration centers. Why? I went around most of the registration centers. Take note. You said people should not come with their old voter ID cards. Mm -hmm. They came to the voters registration center with their old ID cards. You know why? You saw them. I saw them. Well, and I can you give you some of my colleague officers. parliamentary aspirants who saw people come to the registration center with old ID cards. And let me explain what happened. They came with their ID cards. So if I tell you that uh, my name is Sankpa Malema Atta, can you spell that? So they came with the old one so to show... So when they come, they come, my name is Sankpa Malema Atta. Then you are there scratching your head, you can't. So what they do is that they prove that this is the name that has been recorded on their voters' ID mm. card. So you take it, you copy. Copy their age and copy everything. How after you... that, after that, you then call somebody to come and say that the person is guaranteeing for the person. I don't understand. How is that a problem? If you came with your old voters register just because you want, because of the, the, the cards are different anyway. I registered and the cards that. are different. I'm saying that. So if I went to you, the Did you hear my explanation? That's what I'm trying I'm to understand. I'm saying that I came so that you'll be able to even identify my name and spell my name right. With the old card? Yes, with my old card. Mm -hmm. So you used it as a form of identification and sourced almost every information mm -hmm. from my old card. Mm -hmm. After that, you have rejected the card and then you call somebody to come and guarant for me. That is what you did. So people came into the registration center. They did that. Now they have gone. You are calling them that they are done multiple registration. They say they have not done multiple registration. And so when they come there, you have to, after you have gone through with your so-called magistrates, and it is clear that they did not commit the crime, then you have to take their name. So it is not necessarily the case that once my name is on the multiple registrants list, I cannot uh, vote. It means that I have to come for you to clear me. Mm, you see. understand? When you clear me, you have to take my name off. That is one. The other point that they made is that, um, uh, what is it? There is an exception list. What is that exception list supposed to be? What does it mean to you? It means that those people have, he says, she says, those voters who have flouted regulations, they are on the exception list. They regulations, which one? She didn't, she didn't clarify, okay. but, but, but she I, okay. indicated that they are broken some law. My son is 14 years, mm. okay? <laughs> she happen, he happens to be on the voters' register. You, somebody, go and stand somewhere and say, my son is not 14 years. I have said this, and let me repeat it. I'll just look for a lazy chair. Relax, cross my leg, and get a calabash of pito and start drinking. You can go down the sea and come back. I'll tell you that I don't have birth certificate. 
you can go to the you need, some, you need some some kind of um, um I, I have given card. birth I have given no, birth to need, my son you need an and I'm saying that I have said that my son is 18 years but you, you need identification. You, you can't just say with word of mouth. But why? I can guarantee for my son. Oh, I'm no more. You permitted. and another person. Yes. So when we grant that this person is of age and the person can register, and there's nothing you and, can do, and then you come and tell me you that, think that I should prove, I should prove that my son is 18. That's you have flawed. made the allegation. Come and prove. I see. So you okay. see me with my calabash or pito, relaxing and sipping slowly. Okay. So in in essence, so you this think is this is. A very tedious a, a process. Up, your wrap-up comment yeah, this on is the a very tedious. Commission. Now, finally, on this one, the Electoral Commission says 5,000 BVDs mm. for 33,367 registration mm. centers. So the BVDs are short. Not every registration center will get a BVD. Mm. So many people will not be able to verify and to check the system as it's supposed to be. Something is wrong. Why is the Electoral Commission not deploying the full complement of the BVDs? What is the, man, the reason? I don't know the so answer. So all the 33,367 registration centers must have BVDs. Why select so many? For the exhibition. Of, for the exhibition. Because you want to test the efficacy and the robustness of even your BVDs. So this is the time you want to deploy them. Because after this, you will not get the chance again until registration, okay. uh, voting. So give me your wrap-up comment, your, fi your, so your final comment. I am saying that everything the that timing is today. too short. The Electoral Commission has pushed us all into these difficulties. We will certainly go through it, as I have said. Those who supported the Electoral Commission in Simbi to engage in this breakless exercise for all of us, they have seen where we are getting to. But of course, we are all into this okay. together. So we'll see. we will see. How it goes. And I'm, I, right now, I have to realign my activities again. Because you do know that in the course of the week, we have to be doing our National Delegates Congress. Yes. Exhibition is taking place. So where do you go? And these are some of the challenges that I put forward. That political party's timetable, their resources and other things were going to be eaten into by the Electoral Commission. And here we are. We are confronted with reality. Okay. So it's disrupting the political party timetable for, for you. 100,000 cities for presidential candidates. Is the PNC ready for that? And uh, um, uh, 10,000 for uh, pres uh, parliamentary candidates. Is the PNC ready for that? The Electoral Commission is engaged in a very insensitive, and I call them that, look, they are engaged in electoral hooliganism. Um, this is what you can call electoral violence on the people who are participating in the elections. How is this violence? Why? So the fact that I don't have money, does, does that mean that I am not intelligent, I don't have the... But that's not violence, is it? That is hooliganism. How is that hooliganism? Why? Which law says that the Electoral Commission must put monetary impediments on the way of persons who are qualified? If it's an impediment on your part, it's not the Electoral Commission's fault. Who posts the uh, filing fee? They post it, but if you're, the electoral you're, commission you're, you're inability the to you are behaving like Jean Mensa, who says you're, that you're this, inability to raise the money. You are behaving like Jean Mensa, who just said part. right now that look, there is a law and that it is not they. The law is a CI. The CI is a creation of the electoral commission. Hundred thousand cities. Does, so, it, does the PNC have the money to pay? And I'm sure you will contribute because obviously we we'll go out there. We'll I'm, I'm asking a very serious question. That's I'm saying that people of Daniel, but, uh, Daniel first Daniel. and foremost, it is put on a presidential candidate, 100,000. The political party must raise the resources to be able to support the presidential candidate. Mm. Even if they put a billion and we want to contest the election, it is our duty to go out there mm. to go and look for the resources. But I keep asking this question. Why is the Electoral Commission charging filing fees? If you come to our political parties, we charge filing fees because part of the filing fees is used to organize the processes leading to the election the of Electoral Commission office. has always charged filing fees. But I have said time without number and go and review your tapes. Over the years, I've said that it is reckless, it's needless, it's not acceptable that you charge a fee for which you don't use. Because government of Ghana has provided the Electoral Commission with all the resources they need to embark on the 2020 elections. Including the fact that they even have surplus. Today they are telling us that they are employing over 33,367 what they call ambassadors. Just to go and stand there and be telling us that um, when you come, don't go to this distance. You don't think that's necessary? It is not necessary. Why? All of us know the COVID protocols. But no. not all of us are observing the COVID All of us know COVID protocols. And therefore, it is the duty to 
expand on advertisement, probably Joy News could get some part of the advertisement so that people will get to know what we need to do at registration centers. Now you are going to take people and go and stand there. The Electoral Commission has got more than it needs to be able to embark on okay. this exercise. So Why would you charge people money and you take the money and go and keep down and say that when I'm able to obtain a certain percentage, then I come back for my money. Okay. If I had that money, it will enable me to reach out to many more people so okay. that they can vote for me. Okay, I'll come back to our conversation which we started earlier about the PNC, but we need to take a very quick break here. I'm here with Bernard Mona, the General Secretary for the PNC. We're no, talking about I'm the, not General Secretary. The National Chairman, I beg your pardon. The National Chairman for the PNC. Sorry, it's overload of information in my head. And we're having a conversation about why it's 81 days to election and they, they do not have a flag bearer as yet. But then we had to go to the Electoral Commission and there are matters arising. He's commenting on those. Let's take a very quick break. When we return, why should we even take the PNC seriously at all? He will answer that. Do stay with us. Yeah. You're welcome back. This is still the pause with me. We have just a few minutes to wrap it up, but let's talk about the, uh, the PNC's uh, Congress, Ms. Amona. In, as part of why Ghanaians should take the party seriously, walk us through the program. You're having it this weekend, or has it changed again? Um, it's changed to the 26th. Um, you do recall that when we had the National Executive Committee meeting, the leader of the party came with a different date altogether, different filing fees, aside that of the neck. The Council of Elders in their attempt to, as they called it, to mediate, also sat in their corner and also issued their own statement. I had to draw the attention that we are working with party structures, and once NEC has taken a decision, it was not for any one of us. Because I'm a member of the NEC, the leader is a member of the NEC, and so we cannot have any power above the NEC. And so therefore, the Council of Elders, which is a creation of NEC, could not also have taken that decision. I mean, you can advise the NEC, but you can't do that. So you're doing it on 26th, which is next weekend. Next weekend. And no longer this weekend. Not, no, no longer this weekend. Next weekend. But we all met and we looked at the program. As we speak, not all the regions have concluded their regional conferences. Mm -hmm. So it was just fair that we should look at a future date. And that is how come that has been shifted to the 26th. To okay. so allow the various regions or regions that are outstanding in their regional conferences to be able to conclude on that. So hopefully between now and the um, Monday, all the regions would have done the original conferences, and then we can push ahead. Together. On so 26th, give us the venue. Where is it happening at? And um, what is going to happen on that We have over 4,000 um, delegates. We have about 4,300 delegates to participate at the National Delegates Congress. COVID protocols and the president directives will not permit us to congregate. Okay. in that large number. So what we have decided is that we will convene at the various regional centers. So every region will identify a place. The Electoral Commission will be informed. The police will also be informed. Of course, the media will necessarily be at the various regional centers mm. so as to monitor the votes. The votes is going to be in two parts. Our constitution allows us to do the national executive elections and also do the national um, flag bearer contest. And so what we have decided to do is that we will do the national executive elections from 8 a.m. to mm -hmm. 12 in the noon. The results will now be being collated. And then the next phase, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., they will do the flag bearer elections. Okay. So basically that is what is going to take place. And I then see. there will be a coalition center by the Electoral Commission in Accra, and that will be at the headquarters. Okay. Those national officers who will be voting in Accra. In fact, national officers are supposed to vote with the greater Accra. Mm -hmm. But where it is not possible for you to vote in Accra, mm. you have to inform the party and then the Congress committee ahead of time so that they can put your name and your details in the region where you are to be present on the day of voting so that you can vote. Because some of the aspirants want to be in their home region so that they can continue to they can vote and also identify with their people. So basically, that is what is going to happen. And so um, there will be some few constitutional issues that will be tabled. Mm -hmm. There will be, uh, this will be read by the various um, regional chairmen or their secretaries in the various, uh, before the, uh, the voting starts. So it's just going to be issues of constitutional, and then a message from the national chairman, the general secretary okay. of the party, and the leader 
once those messages are read, mm. then I'm sure that the process will start. So it will not take long. We just go straight into voting after these constitutional okay. uh, formalities have taken place. Very well. I have less than, I think, about three or four minutes to wrap up, but I want to bring our viewers in. You, so most of you have been sending so many questions. I can't take all of them, but I'm going to go back to those who sent their questions earlier, so don't be mad if you don't get your question read. In the meantime, Nesta, you are watching us from Goliiri. Goliiri. Right? Goliiri. Uh, you, 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 you sent it, your assembly member there. Thank you very much for sending in your message. I wanted to acknowledge that. But this me messenger is asking, uh, what plans you have for the unemployed nurses in the country? And please tell the president to pay the rotation nurses. We have worked for almost seven months without a penny. Ms. Amona, I'll come to you. I just want to add that question, or that the plans for the unemployed nurses to the... A question about what plans the PNC has for teachers' arrears, because the government... Uh, the current government, she says, have failed us. I want you to put this together in what the highlights of your manifesto, the PNC's manifesto is or would look like. Well, first and foremost, there is no need whatsoever to hold um, people who have worked salaries or income hostage and decide to pay them in piecemeal. I have come and I have relatives who are teachers and these persons were employed. They worked for more than a year and what government has decided to do is to pay them only three months. And when they pay them the three months, they tell them that you have been fully settled. What about the nine months that continue to remain as arrears? And you do know that if you come from Sankana and you are posted to Accra, you have to come and look for accommodation. In most instances, right. you have to traverse from one end to the other. I need to jump in there. Unfortunately, I've run out of time. So I need you to give us a highlight, you know, like uh, give, put it together. What is the uh, PNC presenting? We are presenting people. a manifesto that will ensure that the people of Ghana come out of the current economic misery that we find ourselves in. The farmers of our society will get the full benefit of the PNC manifesto. The teachers in our nation will know that when the PNC come into office, their incomes will not be in areas. Um, we have determined, and this is what I say all the time, that we cannot have BOLA and also be having energy crisis. So we'll have what we call boiler energy, where we can gather our rubbish and turn them into something useful. Mm -hmm. um, other political parties have failed to implement the boiler energy policy, and we want to do that. We can also assure you that instead of allowing the private sector to be the controller of the renewable energy sources, government of the PNC mm -hmm. will ensure that we have sufficient investment in the renewable energy sector so that many Ghanaians will continue to profit from it. Above all, what I can tell you, that there are many things that the PNC will ensure that they are brought into this country duty free. Agricultural implements cannot come into this country. That you sounds like the NDC's manifesto, isn't Well, it? I don't know. I have not read the NDC manifesto. It sounds like it. But I'm telling you that. That is part of the challenge that I have. I'm bringing you PNC ideas. You are talking about NDC. Because if there are similarities, I can, I'm, 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 so I'm, I'm saying that to, this is to, the PNC. It so, well. so it is important to say that this is the PNC manifesto. In that any case, like in any case, NDC's if you manifesto. have been following the PNC over the period, mm. you know that we only add more than things to the manifesto. But in terms of the okay, real meaning, me. the I'm, PNC manifesto I'm, has I'm been. I'm being chased out of the studio. So Let's I can assure you me. that the people of Ghana will again have the best of policy options that will be able to salvage our nation from Okay, there's this question that keeps coming up. They say instead of Mr. Mona concentrating on his party, he's busily campaigning for the NDC. And a lot of people have been sending messages like he's an NDC manager. I, 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 I have, have, I, I have like said that? time without number. I founded the student's wing of the PNC when I was the University of Cape Coast. I became national youth organizer. I've contested three times as a parliamentary candidate. I've been general secretary, I've been national chairman. If I wanted to join any political party in this nation, I think that I have the argument to have joined that political party. I cannot at any day decide for somebody what you think. The PNC is an incromised political party. We are a socialist political party. If I speak socialism and NDC speaks socialism, we may have convergence. I will not run away from the fact that we speak almost the same language. So if the MPP are speaking capitalist and I don't speak capitalist, is that my cup of tea? Okay. So you're not NDC, you're not campaigning for the NDC? No, the I sat here was. throughout and have campaigned, I've told you that yeah. any of the three presidential candidates that win should be the choice for the people of Ghana. Very well.
Very well. So uh, uh, um, he, he's indicated already that Mr. Mahama uh, has, is no longer contesting, you know, on the ticket of the PNC. I wanted to find out where the ambassador at large, where is he? He has his workplace at the um, um, Supreme Medical Center. And I don't know whether he has an office at the presidency. But I can give you his phone number so you can check. <laughs> well. Bernard Mona is national chairman for the PNC. We've been talking the PNC. They are looking to hold their Congress next week. And, uh, you know, they have some three names up. Reverend Sam, AJ Debra, uh, uh, Sam, Samson Awingobit, and David Apa, Apasre? Apasre. Apasre. Okay, but he's indicated that he thinks the PNC can move away from the perception that it's a northern party, which puts him at Reverend Sam AJ Debra. But he says he's national chairman, he cannot take sides. There's more news at my more news at myjoyonline.com. You can log on, take a look at our top store at our top stories and do share with your friends. My name is Gifty Andopia. It's always a pleasure having you. We'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs>